Well, hello, and good evening, and welcome again to the2012fad.com. I will be your host for this evening, and my name is Charlie Blue Hawk. I want to start first tonight by mentioning, um, well, the obvious. I'm probably two months behind in episodes at the moment, and uh, I really should never have uh, dated each episode by a date, because now that I'm two months behind, I'm recording a show that uh, on your computer says was made on April 15th, and it's actually, I believe, June 19th or 20th now, so my apologize, I apologize for the confusion. The other thing I wanted to chat about very briefly with you is the fact that we're getting, or I am getting, more and more uh, messages on the various blogs we have on YouTube and on our homepage, the2012fad.com. Um, telling me how wonderful the show is and how great the show is and asking very politely could I possibly do them more often than I do because obviously I'm two months behind. And uh, I try to be very polite and very, you know, uh, I try to be polite. And what I basically say is I'd love to do the show every day, but until the event, at which point money is not an object, until the event, money is an object, and in this case, more like an objection. And I simply don't have any. I have one corporate sponsor, my beautiful guardian angel in the great state of Wisconsin. And her contribution keeps me going personally and gives me food to eat and a place to live and internet connectivity. But that's about it. And uh, she's a very small corporate person. And as a her business, the majority of her business is on eBay, and she's very successful on eBay. But uh, with only just this one good and kind and gracious lady keeping me personally going, the problem, of course, again comes down to money. And I try again very politely to mention to you that it would be nice if you could help out. It would be nice if you hit the donate button on the top page of the 2012 FAD, which is PayPal. Five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever you could afford to help me keep this show going. This is the second time I've uh, had an endeavor like this. The first one was called honestgovernment.org and um, I finally had to give up on that because nobody would contribute anything and the people I was working with, I, I had just been uh, laid off from NASA at the time. I laid out about ten thousand dollars after I'd been laid off to get that show up and running, and uh, all of my friends from NASA contributed, uh, made a commitment, and each of them was there for one day, maybe two, and discovered the uh, commitments weren't really their thing. So I put all those video episodes up on YouTube and forgot about them. But as you know, my uh, current business associate on the 2012 fad, Mr. Ken Slinker, put this website up to make fun of me and what I've been telling him for years, and then. A few years went by, he emailed me and says, Good God, Charlie, you know all that ridiculous, weird, bizarre, nonsensical garbage you've been telling me all these years? Oh my God, it's true. And I said, and? So anyway, again, I apologize for being two months behind, but again, it comes down to money. And before the event, money is important. After the event, money won't be important. The other interesting thing I note is that when people blog us or put a comment on, on the blogs that say, well, why do you keep asking for money, Charlie? After the event, money is, is worthless. What are you, stupid? And I don't even try to respond to that anymore because, quite obviously, after the event, yeah, money is useless. But you know what happens before the event and money is still useful and has value? You can buy things. You can buy land. You can rent a place to live. You can buy food to eat. You can buy tools. You can buy supplies. You can hire people and pay them for their work, such as building the village. You can buy 100,000 DVDs to watch movies after the event. You can buy toys for the children. You can buy games to play. You can buy books. You can buy a library full of books with money. And that's why I talk about money today. Because before the event, money can be exchanged for things that have value. 
And it's really, even today, after doing this for more than 40 years, I'm still astonished that people don't comprehend that. And instead of trying to explain it to them on the blog sites, I just delete their comments because they're stupid. And after 40 years of this, I, I just really can't talk to stupid people anymore. You, 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 just, you have limits, finally, to say, you know, I just can't do this again. So I delete their comments. I also delete the comments of people who write, and every other word is a curse word. And they're not actually asking questions. They're just cursing at uh, me because they're not really very smart. So I just, do, again, instead of trying to reason with someone who's stupid, which at this point in time really is a waste, I just delete the comments. People ask me, uh, is it okay if I am a guest poster? I said, absolutely. If you have something intelligent to say, if you have something to say other than uh, you're promoting your latest um, search engine, if you have something relevant to say and you're polite and you're courteous, and it's an intelligent conversation that actually conveys something important to people, absolutely, please. And if you post consistently, I'll even interview you if you like, and we can chat on Skype or something and put it up on the website. Uh, we've passed the, I think, 40,000 viewer list already, so more than 40,000 people now subscribe all over the world to this, uh, to this program. So we're getting out there. I'm no longer doing uh, scripts for the episodes, as you might notice, because frankly that takes time, and literally time is money. And there's just so much I'm willing to do anymore. So until we get real corporate sponsors, not to say that the beautiful guardian angel of mine in Wisconsin is not a real corporate sponsor. She's a small corporate sponsor. We need an international corporate sponsorship. I will not abandon my beautiful guardian angel in Wisconsin. But it would be nice to have major corporate sponsorship. Now, last night we talked about time to grow up and how this earth, this world, this home of ours, the human race has been on the planet Earth for 2.5 billion years. That's billion with a B. Earth literally appears to be the home of the human race. And yet, every 32,000 years, as part of the natural life cycle of our world, it flips and per end. Because a dead brown dwarf star passes between us and our sun. It's the companion of our sun. Perfectly normal, perfectly natural. Problem is, every 32,000 years, civilization, whatever that is, on the surface of the Earth is destroyed. Few people on the surface survive, begin the whole process over again. A lot of people go into the crust of the Earth and build cities there and stay there because, frankly, it's a lot easier to deal with than every 32,000 years having um, waves 5,000 feet tall moving at the speed of sound and uh, wiping your cities out. Other people live inside the earth, which happens to be hollow. Again, there's a conversation for another day. And other people look around and say, you know, the universe is electrical. Leaving this earth is easy. Here's how. In fact, you and I can do it today. You do a, do a keyword search on the internet, and you can find designs for flying saucers. You can leave this earth today. Guess what? It's going to cost you money because you need to buy supplies. You need to hire people to do work for you. But basically, it's really, really simple. There are hundreds of patents registered by the U.S. government at the U.S. Patent Office for geogravitic drives. Basically, it's a flying saucer. You can leave the Earth. No big deal. And event after event, millennia after millennia, our older brothers and sisters have left. They've grown up a little. They've left the cradle of civilization, literally the cradle you and I are still in. They've gone. And hopefully they found worlds a little more stable, worlds that don't flip end for end every 32,000 years, places where you can live for 
hundreds of thousands of years without you know, being wiped out by nature. And it's time for you and I to grow up too, because the world's about to, guess what, flip end for end again. What are we going to do? Well, a little too late to start building fleets of uh, spaceships, fleets of flying saucers. Our masters already have those. and Our brothers and sisters who are controlled by our masters are out there in space now. They're traveling through stargates to other worlds. They're traveling in fleets of starships. All human built, by the way, by ancient technology that our masters have amassed. You and I won't ever go that way because we're not the um, genetically modified cattle that our brothers and sisters are who, all, who man those starships or our brothers and sisters who are genetically modified slaves in the huge underground mega cities in the crust of this earth where our masters live and have their empires. You and I will never see those things because we're not, well, up to snuff, I guess. And so tonight I thought we would chat about listen and watch. Now we've touched on this concept briefly before. Whenever you're talking to anyone, particularly a politician or a corporate leader, you listen to what they say, and then you watch what they do. And if those two concepts are different, you're being lied to. Very simple. Now if you really want to freak a politician out, Barack Obama, Ben Bernanke, Henry Kissinger. Say to them, hi, Mr. Kissinger, lovely to meet you. Uh, you're a butcher, you're a Nazi murderer, and uh, Henry Kissinger is actually wanted uh, for war crimes against the human race in uh, numerous countries around the world. Doesn't seem to bother him. So you're having a conversation with Dr. Kissinger. And say, you know, Dr. Kissinger, I, I listen to what you say. And then I watch what you do. Now, Henry Kissinger is a very smart fellow. I probably won't face him at all. But for the sake of argument, say you're having a chat with uh, Barack Obama, a white man from Kenya, pretending to be black, pretending to be an American citizen. And so, you know, Mr. Obama, may I call you Barack? I listen to what you say. And then I watch what you do. And you'll see a black man turn white. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. The quickest way to get rid of a liar is to say that phrase, I listen to what you say, I watch what you do. Because liars count on the fact that they can tell us anything they want, then do anything they want, and then lie to us again. Oh, that never happened. Oh, you never saw that. I've act I actually stumbled upon that quite by accident once. As I said, a very abusive woman I was, I guess, dating while um, sharing her with her husband. She was a professional, well, she was a professional monster. She was actually studying to be a psychiatrist, sorry, a psychologist, because that's, you know, that, that's easier. She was studying to be a psychologist, so, and these are her words exactly. She wanted to learn how to hurt people more effectively. And her whole concept of life was hurting people. And she would make up these amazing stories and then sit back and watch people running around screaming, um, abusing each other. She once told me that her husband went to these Wiccan festivals and she helped him to, well, molest and to rape young girls. And she thought it was very funny. I took it very seriously and I started calling the police in the various towns where these Wiccan festivals were being held. And I was actually told by a female police officer, don't waste my time. Uh, I forget the exact phrase this, uh, this uh, female police officer said to me, but she ba basically got down to until they commit a crime, can't do anything about it, and why do you care? And so this, uh, this woman who I was slash dating, I suppose, she showed up at the house one day, and I didn't know how I was going to get rid of her. So it just sort of occurred to me, you know, I listen to what you say, and then I watch what you do. And she actually went pale, and I never saw her again. So, 
It might be, for lack of a better term, our white magic mantra, protection against evil. I listen to what you say, I watch what you do. Very recently, I, I felt terribly sorry for this man who had contacted me on, on one of my, my, my business corporate website. And um, he sounded to me originally like um, another survivor of the CIA's war against the human race. I grew up, of course, with CIA and U.S. Army Air Corps intelligence street thugs. These were child rapers, drug smugglers, arms dealers, uh, money launderers, extortionists, uh, real estate scammers. I mean, the true scum of the earth, which of course is the heart and soul of the CIA. And so when I heard this fellow talking, I felt sorry for him because he sounded like a survivor, another survivor of the CIA's war against the human race. And so in the course of many, many months, as I'm trying to you know, help him, I agreed to write his book on his life with the CIA and uh, the uh, screenplay also on his life. And I kept saying to him, you know, uh, Rosario, your, your story doesn't make any sense. And so I finally had to come up with a timeline that he had to stick to so he could tell his lies in his own way. And originally he told me, and I have all of this in writing, of course, in emails, because he wouldn't talk to me on the phone more than once, because on the phone, he could not dodge questions. So I was asking who, what, where, when, why, how. And he didn't like that, so he never spoke to me on the phone again, so everything was done in email. And so I have his whole story of his whole life, supposedly, in email. And I kept saying to him, you know, Rosario, your, your, your story doesn't make any sense. But I felt sorry for him, so I was trying to help him out. His fellow survivor, you know, that's what you do, theoretically. And it turns out uh, he was not an agent of the CIA. It turns out he was an asset of the CIA, and the CIA set him up and is still in the process of running a plot to destroy his very famous, very powerful uncle in, uh, in Italy, who was a defender of democracy in Italy. And, of course, the CIA hates democracy. They hate freedom. They hate us. But this little fellow that I was trying to help, um, his true nature finally came out the very day that I finished the first draft of his book and the first draft of his screenplay at the same time. He started treating myself and uh, my business associate, Mr. Kenneth Slinker, like filth. And I got a couple of really nasty emails from him treating us like filth. And then he discovered one day that the website that we had created for him and were hosting for him and were paid for for him, he needed help. And all of a sudden, it was, you know, you're, it went from your scum, your filth, your trash, and you should just be grateful that, you know, I, I spit on you and you should be thankful to be in my presence. It went from that to, oh, golly, gosh, darn, guys, can you please help me? And I said, ah, okay, that's what we're dealing with. It's the listen to what they say and then watch what they do thing. And yet again... They believe, these creatures believe, that they can tell us anything they want to get their own way. And this particular fellow was playing on my sympathies for, you know, gee golly gosh darn, I was a survivor of the horrible things the CIA did to me. And it went down to, well, you know what, <laughs> he really was a willing participant of working with the CIA. And it was all just delusions. He wasn't an agent. He was an asset. But the mantra is... And you, if I might suggest, you might want to repeat it to yourself over and over and over again until you remember it. I listen to what you say. I watch what you do. And then watch the liars scatter. They will go running. Mr. Obama, sir, before you were elected, you promised all of your supporters that you would stop the wars that George, the two George Bushes created. No, that was a lie. He's actually escalated the wars. Obama, of course, is just a finger puppet. But still, it was a lie. And Bernanke is stealing more and more money for his masters, the bankers, the corporations, every single day. I personally know, from personal experience, 
that the only way economies are stabilized or grow or prosper is when money is changing hands. Right now, there's so much money in the United States, the people who stole it, our masters, the bankers, the corporates, their slaves, their mandarins, there's so much money in the United States, they, they literally don't know what to do with it. I mean, it's filling warehouses. And yet, you and I, this money belongs to us, but we don't even know it exists. We don't have jobs. We're being thrown out of our homes every single day for no reason and being left on the streets to die. Why are we letting them do this to us? Listen to what they say. Watch what they do. I've been avoiding broadcast TV for years for reasons that we will chat about later. Something called the Lily Wave, the Lily Effect. It's where, if you ever see people, especially children or old folks, sitting in front of the TV, how it seems that their minds all of a sudden are gone and they're staring blankly at the television, there's a physical reason for that. The flicker rate of the television is, I believe, 60 hertz, which gives you the lily wave or the lily effect, which basically turns your brain off and allows subconscious messages to be broadcast into your subconscious brain. That's why I was uh, avoiding television for years, but then I realized the other day that that's a mistake because I'm missing a lot of the mind control programs that they currently are using against us, and some of them are quite astonishing. Quite complex, but quite simple at the same time. But anyway, if I might again suggest the mantra, I listen to what you say, I watch what you do. I listen to what you say, I watch what you do. And use this quietly to yourself whenever you're doing business with your banker, your politician, your accountant, your attorney, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. I listen to what you say, I watch what you do. And there will be a portion of your mind because our mind can compartmentalize itself. There'll be a portion of your mind where you're gonna hear things and then you're gonna see things. And your mind's gonna to try to separate those two just so you can get through the day. It's gonna hear what she says, and then it's going to watch what she does. And those two things are not going to be the same. And this will go on for quite some time until you finally, it just builds up and builds up and you, you just can't ignore it anymore. And you'll wonder to yourself, why did I let her get away with all that crap for so long? Because your mind's trying to save you. But that's another story for another day. an old chant, an old prayer, an old belief of a very old culture that was wiped out. And I wish it was still here. May you live as long as you wish. May you love as long as you live. For the2012fad.com, this is Charlie Bluehawk. The 2012 Fad is brought to you by Coffee and Blood, Love Letters Between the Dead, a series of five erotica horror novels about a fallen angel finding his way back to regain his own soul, and how the CIA war against the human race. Their black magic captures and traps him in the body of a mind-controlled slave designed to hunt down and to kill their god, their Satan.